Um, I try to come up with some guidelines for master-slave definition, and I think um, this list is just very briefly, and I think it applies in many, many cases, but there might be some exceptions to these rules and in which exactly going the opposite than what you see here might, be, might lead to the um, best results. However, I would say that in many cases you can follow these rules to get a good result in terms of your uh, contact simulation. So in generally, you say that larger surfaces should be master, so that means if you have, for example, two deformable bodies, one is like this and the other one is just very, very tiny. So it makes sense that the geometrically larger surface uh, is the master if the bodies, let's say, are made of the same material and stuff. So the same element density and so on. And then simply the larger surface should be the master because it is uh, numerically more efficient because the algorithm looks, so to say, from the slave and looks for a master. So the, the slave looks uh, for the master and if now the entire, this slave, so to say, would look for whatever master, you can easily understand why this is computationally less efficient. Um, but however, I would say in metal forming, usually, let's say, work pieces and dies are roughly of the same size. So maybe one of the other two rules um, are of higher importance so that you generally say the stiffer body should be the master. And especially in metal forming, quite often one of the two is rigid body and then you say there is almost no case when you would not define the rigid body as a master but a deformable one. So if you have a rigid die where you do not uh, calculate any stresses or whatever and have a deformable workpiece, the die and or the matrix is your master and the deformable workpiece is your slave. Um, if, however, they are of comparable size and stiffness, there is another criterion that you could apply and that is the mesh density. So the coarser mesh should be the master. That is of a similar reason as the first one because it is just basically computationally more efficient. Uh, that's the main reason. If they have the same size and stiffness, there is no right or wrong technically, just using uh, the course as the master will, I, will, I wouldn't say significantly, but will have a positive influence on your computational time. However, the results should be similar if you do not apply this uh, third rule. And um, yeah, keep in mind the way that the slave nodes are not allowed to penetrate uh, the master surface, so for example, that the workpiece has to slide along a die. So think about this as a die. And uh, here comes the workpiece, for example, that you really say, okay, this node has to stay outside the die. And I think you can now easily understand why it makes sense to uh, define this as the master, the matrix, the die, and the deformable workpiece as the slave. And if you have, for example, that one of the master nodes at some point slightly penetrates uh, into the deformable workpiece, I think you can also understand why this is not so much of a big deal. Um, tracking approaches. Tracking approaches is something that you should usually not think about it as much because I hope you understand by now that this course is about checking NLG on, on so switching to finite strain uh, element theory, uh, finite strain kinematic theory and so on. And in this case, uh, you basically must use finite sliding because I cannot imagine any case except of a small strain simulation where you switch energy on off, that you are interested only in small relative motions. In this case, you could use small sliding 
as the tracking approach and save some computational time. But nowadays, energy on, on is usually the industry standard and also using finite sliding because whatever you do in metal forming, it probably will uh, incorporate large deformations, rigid body movements, rigid body rotations, and also a lot of sliding between the uh, master and slave. And especially that means from the start point of the contact. So let's go back to this example. So in this case, first contact is initiated here and small sliding would say the theory is not valid anymore if this slightly moves here or in this direction. And of course you can imagine that this is rarely the case um, in metal forming. So what is more of interest is the discretization scheme because you can, um, you can think about this uh, and depending on the problem you're analyzing, you should um, think about, I have two options. I have the node to surface and surface to surface approach. So let's start with node to surface approach. Um, I would say it's, sorry, this is the traditional approach. It's called a one-way contact because you have one true surface and one true node that looks for this master surface. And you lo you're looking for a projection. As I said, you're not looking, for example, necessarily for a point. In this case, um, the point is, by coincidence, clo the closest point on these two edges to A, but for example here you can see that the closest distance to this edge um, is neither this node nor this, mm, nor this node, however, but somewhere in the surface. So this is, the cool thing is um, Abacus can con construct these virtual edges and then using the tension to this, um, the node can track the shortest distance between it and the master surface. Um, so yeah, it's based on the normal of the master surface, but viewed from the node to the master. Uh, it's quite robust and I can tell you from my own experience that changing to node to surface saved uh, the day for me once during um, a simulation project which involved um, there was a, I would say, very spiky uh, tool and quite a round body. So yeah, we get the spikes all the time. And then node to node to surface helps to uh, get a good con. Uh, damn it find a good contact interaction at this particular very difficult point because this point is challenging for the algorithm because it basically consists especially triangles and this is why tetrahedra also perform worse in contact because this node ba basically is part of two contact edges and this makes it more challenging us us usually. How, um, for especially if you try to numerically flatten this curve. We'll talk about this uh, now at the surface to surface. So surface to surface nowadays has almost become the standard because it usually yields more realistic results, um, especially on round and curved surfaces and even more so if both of the contact surfaces are curved or around, uh, you get definitely much better results in terms of a smooth distribution. With node to surface, you see, like I wouldn't say a checkerboard pattern, but you can see patterns like this. And with surface to surface, your contact force increase really smoothly. This is um, because it looks from both sides of a contact and the and handles, even though the, the general the general approach it's, is still that a master node looks for a uh, and a slave node looks for a master surface. So we see this here and here. 
Um, however, the nodes, the adjacent nodes on the slave surface are now used to average over the contact region. So you can see a good example here. So here, these two are in, no, in node to surface based contact, are in contact here and here. And in surface to surface, there is an artificial stiffening of the element between the two because both would like to get in contact. However, the since it is considered as one surface, you say, okay, before these two contact, these two points would get into contact, my true surface, my true element between the two would get into contact here at this very point. And you can understand that this usually decreases the penetration depth. The penetration depth, for example, would be this distance here, and here it's almost zero. However, you see that this also has an effect on the rest of the body. Um, so you can usually say, and this is also almost ex the exact same example that I um, showed you before, the one on top here. Um, so it, usually you say that it works well if the surface tangents tend to be parallel. As I said, if you have, for example, something like this, penetrating into something like this. In this case, you, it will be even faster than no to surface um, and gives you much better results. But as I pointed out uh, here and on top of here and in my example on the previous slide, if you have sharp edges um, on the slave and the master has quite a coarse mesh, you will get a lot of problems. However, it's almost the exact problem if you have it the other way around, which is depicted here on top of the page. So before I gave you the example of a, a sharp uh, edge of the slave and a course master and here on top it's vice versa, you have problems in both cases. So really this in, in circumstances like this, no to surface is the uh, better way to do. But if you can really make sure that you have quite smooth surfaces uh, coming into contact, then you will get uh, better results. However, generally less robust and more costly.